Tammy and Lisa. Riding side saddle. Here we are. We're back. We certainly are. It's just the two of us this As time. As always. <laughs> we're always back. Whether yeah. you like us back or not. <laughs> well, clearly you do. Because otherwise you wouldn't listen. Otherwise you wouldn't listen. That's really true. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so we're here. A couple of cousins sitting in the recording studio. Also known as a car. <laughs> Doing what cousins do. Doing what we do. We just like to talk and laugh and chat and and talk about things that um not I, I don't know. It's not that people never talk about this stuff, but um Lisa's a digger. We like to dig a little bit deeper sometimes into those things that um maybe we talk about more superficially. Um, or some things we don't talk about at all, like yeah. hormones and things. Yeah. We've had several episodes on that, which were pretty terrific. Um, that's not our focus today, though. Yeah. Just valuable conversations yeah. that perhaps don't necessarily happen on every day. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I'd like to think that we're planting some seeds. I know they planted a few for myself. For myself. That's for darn sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Watered those suckers. I hope so. Yeah, they're like Jack and the Beanstalk <laughs> so, seeds. Sometimes they feel a little they're growing. dried out and parched. But oh. <laughs> sometimes they feel like they're growing. Sometimes I feel like, you know. Or growing too fast. Yeah, that or like I really need to work on that. I said I was yeah. going to, so I really should. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are just doing a little bit of a follow-up. So mm-hmm. we've... Um, Gosh, we've introduced so many folks into this riding oh, side saddle. Two. Yeah. Um, different perspectives, <clears throat> different levels of insight. Um, most recently, we had my sister in law, Nikki, on. Hi, Nikki. Um, <laughs> and she shared with us something that's near and dear to her heart um, called emotional management. That was a really fun episode to record. It was. And as I listened back, I was like, ooh, <laughs> Lisa's right. That was like a ping pong ball. I didn't feel it at the time, but yeah, when I listened back, yeah. I'm like, slow down, girls. Bring it down. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> you can definitely tell where my yes. energy is as opposed to where yours and Nikki's was as of, yeah. at that time. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it was really some amazing, fantastic uh, information. It was good stuff. But you know what? It, it, it also... Um, and you and I talked about this really briefly after the fact. I, And I think this is part of the Enneagram thing that we've already had several episodes on. Um, I met her energy. Nikki is very high energy. Mm. I am generally not. Love her. I'm yeah. not. I love Nikki. Yeah. And I rose to meet her energy. So when you were like, oh, there's so much energy, I didn't realize <laughs> it until you said it. And, I, and then I realized that I rose to meet Nikki's energy. And As I a challenger. An, yes. Yes. I, yes. I think that is an Enneagram trait for me. It, and and then I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that about myself. Oh, interesting. Because I feel like I'm not being me then. I'm not that high energy mm-hmm. by, on my own, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so it was like I've had to think about that kind of a lot. Like why? I, it almost felt chameleon-like. And I don't I don't like that how that feels either. Mm-hmm. I just want to be who I am. Well, that's interesting. And and I might be completely like running off rogue. I might be running rogue here. But if you think about it even from a peacemaker or a nine oh, wing yeah, perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You're just, you know, I'm I'm along for the ride. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what you need me to do. So maybe that maybe. challenger with a nine wing had something to do with maybe so. with that. Like, oh I, I, also I just, see where you're at. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up there, there with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also really just like Nikki and I enjoy her I company love her. and her energy is it's so just big and beautiful and I it should just suck me right in. Yeah, absolutely. Which which then tied into emotional management, right? So like just Taking a step back is what we talked about, and we want to talk about a little more, was observing your emotions. Yeah. And so when I realized that I was that I was having a lot of high energy and high emotions because of the environment I was in and the people I was with, it made me take a step back and, and look at that. And that's when I was like, ooh, I hope I hope that wasn't chameleon like, because I do have a ten- tendency to, to do that. I can I can fit in just about anywhere where it's talking to a you know CEO of a Fortune five hundred company or a you know a, a, I don't a know I custodian don't... at school. I, like I can talk to anybody. I fit in anywhere. I'll be really thing. honest. I am envious a bit of that style to be able to mm-hmm. um, acquiesce to um, somebody. 
that's something that I actually have a really big challenge with. And it gives me a lot of social anxiety mm. uh, to not be able to do that, right? Like all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so there's so much happening here. And I can't, like I, I teased in the episode that I'm on the slow bus, like literally five miles an hour, slow bus, as opposed to, you know, the race cars that were speeding past me between you and Nikki. And I was like, OK, er, you got to <laughs> you have to put on your brakes because I have to catch up. Um, so so I envy that a bit to be able mm-hmm. to acquiesce to somebody else's style and well, persona to, to have that conversation to a situation. It's all good, sister. It, I'm not saying it's not good. But I felt like it tied really into emotional management because it's about observing. Yes. That like that's step number one. If you're gonna manage your emotions, you have to know what they are first. Yeah. So So I felt like it really was a good tie in. So let so let's back up a little bit and just do a really high level uh, summary of what that episode was. Nikki shared um, perspective on something that she really appreciates and, and researched and find value in, um, in her everyday life, in her career, in her home life. And it, it's called emotional management. Um, what it did is broke out emotions into two categories. One of them being primary, which we kind of connected mentally into primal, right? There, mm-hmm. there was a group of very core emotions. Help me out. There was sadness and anger and joy. Fear, fear, peacefulness, power. and power. Yeah, right. I think those were the so those that were um, identified as as the primary emotions thank you. or primal. Right, is because what they we right because they to. felt right. So she she gave the example of when somebody um, receives really bad news. Right, you know, someone's had an accident, and like on you know cop shows, and whoever they're bringing that news to doesn't have the right reaction what they'd expect right right? because they're not having that primary or primal response exactly exactly so the way Nikki had described it in those five or six um, emotions that's really your fundamental emotion yeah and um, she had uh, addressed a situation or a, a just something that we all oftentimes experience is um, if you do not process those mm-hmm. emotions mm-hmm. or manage those emotions at that core deep level, it can honestly really send you down the wrong track. Because secondary emotions that, come out. Yes. So those are things like disappointment, um, rage, rage. Yes. Well, that, and so some guilt, of these, I, guilt, shame. guilt, shame, right. a rage, I feel like fits under anger. Um, but um, she, she even talked about being too joyful. Right. And Overconfident. Just, yes. Right. 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 Someone who's on a power trip. What does that look like? That doesn't feel good to the people around them. That's for darn sure. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you do not process that original primary emotion, it can kind of go rogue yeah. into you separate slip into secondary into emotions, separate then. emotions that, you Which know, often are may destructive. just come out of balance. And I, and I think right. for me personally, it was that level of balance, like, um, no matter what the emotion is, recognize the emotion, observe a, the emotion. Give it some words. Right. Understand yeah. what is happening so you can process through it. And therefore, it doesn't just go random or rogue or right. out of balance. Right. right? Whatever that might right. be. You don't get it, too much in one direction. Yeah. It might be, you know, something that we consider as you know, good or bad, right? Fear or anger or sadness might be um, perceived as a bad or a Mm -hmm. negative emotion, Mm -hmm. whereas peaceful or joyful or powerful might be considered a positive or a good emotion. But if you don't process those in that really raw prime primal state, Mm -hmm. um, it can become out of balance. And I think that that was really what the intention was behind um, that That most recent episode. I agree. So, so one of the things that we really um, identified just through that conversation, um, that voluptuous, high energy <laughs> level conversation was to be Ooh, able to... That wore me out, actually. <laughs> was, I so, loved it. I did, I loved I did it. too. But afterwards, I was like, whoo that took a lot <laughs> out of me. Not because it, it just because of the high level of energy. Yeah. That's not where I usually live. Yeah. I like to keep it a little more, you know. I love it. I, and I do too. I don't mean that to sound in a bad way, but it was it it was um, 
It was so much fun. But this is exactly what we're talking about. When you get to be too much of something. Ah, now I see where exactly you're going. It's exactly that. It's too much, yeah. right? Yeah. So it left me depleted in some, in some respects. I was really tired. Yeah. My my like my heart was very full and happy but my body was very tired because i was i was like on eight yeah right interesting in, in a fun way not mm. in an angry right, way right right yeah in a fantastic sort of way absolutely so you took that joy yeah, and you expanded went a little too far yeah. yeah all right all right well nice observation of that <laughs> Because honestly, that's one of the things that it we is. brought out or, yeah. or pulled forward from that conversation was just that's how to you be manage able your emotions, to observe it. it, right? Like, oh, all right, so I experienced that. So, what the hell was that? Like, right. like take that a snapshot in time and be like, all right, what, 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 what am I feeling? Well, and I think it's easy to do that when it is um, uh, more of, and I don't really like to say positive and negative emotions, but yeah. that's how we understand them, right? So when it's a negative emotion, I think it's easier to take a step back and identify that. Mm -hmm. I am angry. Mm -hmm. And then dissect that. Why am I angry? Right. But when you're when you're joyful, do you often stop and think, I feel so good right now. I had such a great day. And why do I feel so good? Right. What was so great about this day? Why was it different than the other days I've had? What What is it about this day that feels so good? Yeah. Well, or so peaceful or, you know. I And I suppose that when <clears throat> we are um, in a situation where we're experiencing what you referred to as negative emotions, it seems more natural for us to really dissect that because we don't want to feel that way. So let's really get down to, you know, what's causing us to feel mm -hmm. that way as opposed to a emotion that might be considered positive or good, you know, joyful, mm -hmm. happy, powerful, peaceful, whatever you want to, whatever um, emotion you want to add in there. Like sometimes you're just like, oh, woo I don't I don't give a shit where that came from. I'm feeling it and I'm going to run with it. Right. But to have the discipline to be able to say, you know, I am really feeling fantastic right now. Let's let's pause for a minute and observe even that. Right. Perhaps we don't have quite the discipline there mm -hmm. that we might when we're dealing when you're with angry. an emotion when you that you or that's negative. displeasurable. Yes. Right. Right. Um, so. So as a follow-up to that, um, we dove in a little bit to figure out mm -hmm. what observing emotions really How do you means. do that? Yeah. Like, that sounds great at a high level, but what but does that actually mean? when you're in the middle mean? of, you know, an argument and you're having a lot of feelings, how do, you, how do you even start to back out of that to be an observer? Yeah. I And I think, at least from where I'm at, from um, my level of maturity... Um, I think sometimes that comes in either I have to say, we need, we need to pause a minute. This is getting, this is getting too much for me and I need to process this, right? So literally taking a time out mm -hmm. from that interaction, because I personally know about myself, maybe, maybe other people have superpowers around this, but I do not to be able to observe it. Um, while it's taking place, mm. I I have to say time out. Like I will reconvene here in X amount of time and continue this conversation. But right now I need to I need, I need to pull myself back because I don't necessarily know what's really going on. I know what my primal emotion is right now. <laughs> it's probably not a good one. I want to punch you in the face. Right. <laughs> Right, right. I'm licking my knuckles as we stand here, um, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna pull out of this, yeah, so that I can process this a little, little bit and figure it out. Why am I so angry? Right, because what has it? What has been triggered? Well, and I know that I'm in that place of triggering mm -hmm. and kind of spiraling in my mind yeah. when I cannot. Um, when I cannot figure out how I got there. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I do like know what you're you mean. so angry and somebody asks you a very logical question and you're like, 
well, I, I don't even fucking know, but, <laughs> but let me tell you, right? Like that's when I know yeah, that I have just gone, in, gone too far, too far yeah. and I just need to push pause and spend a little time, right? Figuring it out so that yeah. I can figure it out in my own head and secondly, be able to communicate it. Like that's, that, that's a really big two, key indicator for absolutely. me. Absolutely. But those are two different skill sets, right? Figure it out in your own head and then find the words to communicate that in a way that is not going to fuel all of the anger that you just took a time out from. Right. Right. Or, and, or maybe it has to, Maybe. like if you're being fully vulnerable and honest with yourself and whomever it is you're having this conversation with, you know, maybe, maybe it has to. So, so very simplistically from an observation perspective, the first step is to be able to like truly identify the emotion that you're having. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is another thing that I've learned just with my life experiences within the last couple of months is I can be having multiple emotions yeah. at one time Absolutely. and they can be polar opposite and they're happening at the same time. Oh yeah. Talk about that. Like let's pull open like three so you books can be at angry a time. and joyful at the same time. I can be maybe um, sad and grateful oh, okay. at the same time, which would be a really great example of some yeah. of the things that yeah, I've yeah, experienced sure. recently. I could see that. Mm -hmm. And they're completely different. Yeah. Right? So if I understood Nikki properly, and she can correct us if we're wrong, or if I'm wrong, but sadness would be the primary emotion. Yes. Grateful would be a secondary emotion. Perhaps. Grateful, maybe a secondary promotion to uh, emotion to joy, or peacefulness, or peacefulness. Yeah, yeah. I don't have like I know she has done a ton of research. Right, that's why I'm saying I necessarily. I, have I could that be wrong. Me. Yeah, but so I, I so I see how those two things are different, but they're not both primary emotions. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. I can see uh, um, fear and anger at the same time. Mm-hmm. One time, um, I was, it was Christmas, I was driving to my brother's house and, uh, you know, it's Wisconsin and it's winter and, um, there was so much construction in his area and there had been for some time. Every time I went there, the way I thought I was going to go was closed and my GPS kept trying to route me on a road mm, that was, it closed. wasn't open. Yeah. It was, they had not plowed it. It was not, it was not something they were going to plow. And it, and I couldn't I couldn't get out of that. I didn't know where he lived in relation to where I was, so I couldn't even find on the map where he was. So I was so I was fearful. I was scared. We were lost. Me and my kids are lost. And I'm angry. Yeah. So I had fear and anger at the same time. Mm -hmm. Those two things did not combine to make a great Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we got there, I was crying. Emily was like this Effing sucks. Right. Very stinking Christmas to right. me. It was terrible. Yeah. So you can have more than one primary emotion at the same time. I think, based on my own experience I'm, in I'm that. I'm pretty certain you can. Yeah. I'm 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 quite certain you can. Um I ex I experienced that. And they don't even have to be in the same category. Mm. Right? Like fear and anger in my mind, like they're relatively in the same category. Well, right. They both right? have negative connotations. I don't know if I could see how you would have, let's say, anger and joy at the same time, anger and peacefulness at the same time. So this did not happen. Like, but as an example, mm -hmm. it might be that your teenager mm -hmm. was um, out past curfew. Sure. Right. So at the point in time when they come home and it's oh, 30 minutes past curfew, you're I pissed. See. Anger? Right. You're pissed because Got they it. did not follow through yes. with what the expectation Probably was. fear. Fear, right? And and joyfulness to some okay. degree because you're oh, home. Thank God you're okay. That. But now that. I'm going to kill you. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. Got it. Okay, so, I see that. Yeah, so yeah. Those, those type of things, they can, they can happen, happen congruently right. yeah. at the same time. Polar opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm I so it. angry at you right now, and I love you with every bit of And I'm so glad at you're me. home. Right. Right. Now go to bed before I spank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're grounded. Damn teenagers. 
Right. We'll talk about this tomorrow <laughs> when my when my joy has gone away. <laughs> so, um, so actually, uh, Tammy had shared with me some of the research that she had done in preparation for this conversation because this is a new skill. Yeah, really. absolutely. Maybe we might be doing parts of this already without realizing it, but we're but, not putting words to it. Correct. That's for sure. It's not a practice. Yet, no. Right. So. Um, noticing and naming your feelings, which we've just talked about, um, to start, just notice how you feel when things happen. Mm. So, you know, just kind of like in the movie clip, say, you know, push pause. Mm -hmm. How am I feeling in this moment yeah. or when that just happened? And then kind of pick them apart, right? Because there can be multiple emotions at one time, but, um, just taking like one lane, and saying, all right, so... Just pick one emotion. Yeah, so I felt happy. I felt glad. Mm -hmm. Let, let's, let's research that and figure it out. Perhaps, um, you know, being able to describe it in different ways, that there might be different words to be able to say glad. Maybe it's relieved. Mm. Or, you know, in the example of the yeah, kid the coming home. coming home late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and this is my favorite, right, in the five ways to practice um being able to observe, observe your emotions keep a feelings journal oh. <laughs> man do you know how many journals oh, i'm gonna have in my life yeah. right now <laughs> like eight hundred thousand <laughs> journals a family journal a lisa journal a uh, feelings journal a feelings journal <laughs> so many journals <laughs> yeah that one did touch you yeah <laughs> could see how that would bring you joy even. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then uh, the fifth, the fifth piece on this, which I'm not sure if I'm totally tied into, but I'm, I'm good all the way through the journaling part, being able to just yeah. really dissect that and, and be very vulnerable, sure. right. To be able to let your feelings out. Yeah. Just figure so out you the can words. Process them. Yes. Yeah. Figuring out right. the words sure. to those feelings. But number five says, <laughs> says notice feelings in art or songs or movies. Oh. You know, I I think some people do though. I'm not I'm not attached to songs like my husband is for instance. Yeah. He he feels all of those words, all of the the moods, the tempo. Yeah. He feels all of it and that that is an outlet for him for yep. sure. Yep. Um he knows all the words to all of the songs that he loves. It, it's um he hears a song once and if it resonates, he's got it. It's done. It, that's it. Yep. And and I and I don't like that. Doesn't connect for me. Art does though. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you would be able to connect emotions to art. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And for me, when I am doing things that are creative, I connect my emotions to that, that way, piece. as opposed to looking at a sculpture and thinking, "Oh, I can see the artist." was you know feeling this way right yeah oh, interesting but how does it make me feel when I look at it or when I do it interesting mm. I don't know that I've ever extended that far I don't mm. know that I I don't know that I can't do that but I've never extended it that far hmm. well when you practice observing more often maybe you would and I talked about this one other time on an episode um, I had the house to myself and I broke, broke out my watercolor paints for the first time in a while. And as I'm taking all of my things out and just enjoying that process, I found myself humming mm. and singing a little song. And, and in that moment, I mean, it, I'd been doing it for a few minutes and then all of a sudden I realized, oh, I'm feeling really joyful and peaceful right now. Yeah. And this I just feels really good. And I could absolutely do that. And I do do that. However, I don't know that I could look at a piece of art and say, I feel a large sense of mm. put in the emotion. I, I don't know that I could I think do that. for my own art, I do. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I look at, at someone else's artwork and think, oh, you must have been feeling really sad or really angry. Yeah. Um, I mean, some art, I guess, I mean, looks yeah, angry. I, suppose. I could see right, that, right. right? Or or looks very happy, or or whatever, scared maybe. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily feel it. I can right. recognize it, and I can see it, but I don't take it all the way. So in. you're observing it, though. Yeah, yeah, interesting. For sure. Another article that I had read um, talks about the same types of things, right? Um, being able to identify the emotion, add a name to the emotion. 
Um, and then it like, it talked specifically around taking that emotion and setting it outside of yourself. Nikki talked a little bit mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. um, during our episode as well, where right. she said, you know, put it outside of yourself and look at it from every angle. Yeah. Like, like observe it and view it. And that's what it talked about here. I am angry. Why am I angry? Right. What is it about like literally this lift it outside yes. of me yes and and analyze it right mm -hmm. i i no longer feel that emotion because it's 5 feet outside of my body right now right. but let me like just dissect where did all this. that come from exactly exactly what's fueling that anger it's disappointment it's insecurity it's feeling uncared for or unsafe right. or whatever right and even in this um article it talks about being able to you know you can take that emotion back it doesn't mean that after you put it outside of yourself and you analyze the shit out of it that you can't own that again mm -hmm. you can you can bring that back and um and if you're not really done with it and in part i think you need to right to finish the processing um well i, I don't well I mean, maybe, maybe you do. I'm not saying you don't. Not lay your head on it and call it yours for the rest of right. your life. Don't get stuck there. Right. But when the way I think of it is, so now I have all of these secondary emotions that, so I had the primary emotion, I was angry, and then I took it out and I set it aside and I looked at it and I've got all of these other secondary emotions, insecurity, fear, not, well, maybe fear, um, uh, disappointment, and not feeling cared for, those are things that I can take, those secondary emotions, I can take back to the conversation yeah. with somebody and say, so I know I got really mad and here's why. Right. I was really disappointed because yeah. I thought I was going to get A when I got B. Right. And when I got B, I felt uncared for. Unvalued. I felt, right, right ignored. Right. I felt unseen. Right. Right. Agree. I totally, totally so, agree. But you have it, to take that back a little bit in order to have yes, that conversation. Yes, but right? not take it in like it's your oxygen. Correct. Take it back so you can have the conversation. And for me anyway, that's how I process it. So I'm able to move through it and let it go. Otherwise, I'm going to get stuck. Right. And, and you're then, there. And, and then, then, then I'll be angry becomes and resentful. And, right. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. This... <laughs> It, it's funny how things come full circle sometimes. In this particular article, it talks about a third step, which is giving emotion a form. Mm. And I think now that I'm looking back at this again with the context <clears throat> that um, from your article, and it talked about you know being able to look at art mm -hmm. and identify a particular emotion. Well, that's that's what it's saying here, but in a mm -hmm. different way. Um, really, to be able to, um, you know. If your emotion had a size, oh. right, what size would it be? If it had a shape, if it had a color. Oh, that's so interesting. And that's creating it from a abstract, untouchable, mm -hmm. unviewable oh, uh, perspective into a very concrete, maybe critical, critical might be the wrong word, but very um, form shape, like mm -hmm. a shape. Tangible. Tangible, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's doing the same thing. Right. So if I am feeling joy or um, gratefulness, that might feel yellow and mm -hmm. it might feel soft on the edges and more round oh. as opposed to something where it's maybe a fear based emotion, which f maybe has a jagged shape. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, you know, maybe shallow on one end, but very blown out on the other end. So. When I say, like, I can't look at art and capture an emotion, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> well, it's not a lie. You just I mean, didn't I just realize did it until right now. I just did it. Yeah. And I didn't know. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Look at you observing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Such an observer. Yeah. I think, I think also part of um, learning how to observe, it's not even just your emotions necessarily. Well, you are only responsible for your own emotions. You're not responsible for how anyone else feels or behaves. Um, but sometimes taking a step back and observing how other people are behaving. Yeah. Sometimes it, it makes it um, a little easier for you, for myself anyway, to see things in myself when I observe it in someone else first. They're looking really angry. Obviously, I mean, that's a terrible example. Obviously, I know what it feels like to be angry. Right. Right. But... Um, oh, I'm not even coming up with a good example right now. Um, 
maybe disappointed. Maybe. Disenchanted. Maybe. Yeah. Right. So when you see it, when if you aren't, I feel like we, especially with social media, we are so used to vomiting all of our own thoughts all of the time, even feelings all of the time, that we don't often take a step back to just be quiet and observe. Yeah. We're so, so focused on understanding that we forget, to, or we're so focused on people understanding us yeah. that we forget to understand others. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we really are understanding us yeah. when we're just so busy. It, it's almost like, um, like cataloging our day. It's not really feeling the day. It's just getting all of the moments that are postable, post worthy, Instagram worthy, as opposed to feeling those things. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're just going through life so we can share them Get to the as next opposed one. to really feeling them. Yeah. Right. I remember one time I was at, um, was at a barbecue um, and I only knew two other people there. And so there's a whole bunch of people and people kept coming up to talk to me. And I, I don't know if I said five words the whole, the whole night because they were just like vomiting their whole entire, it really was like I was on their Facebook page just scrolling through. It, I know. Sounds and I was exhausting. like, what is happening? Why are people feeling the need to tell me all about themselves when I, I'm, I'm probably never going to see them again, but I, what? I don't get it. Like It feels like a push play on the that tape it. recorder. It was it. It felt uh, like I was stuck in the middle of, of a, a Twilight like, Zone. A social media yeah. app. Right. Yeah. And and that was maybe one of my first um, times really being an observer. Mm -hmm. Not because I really knew that's what I was doing, but because there was not anywhere for me to get one word in edgewise or get one thought out anyway. So I had no choice but to be an observer. Mm -hmm. and, I was, and I was like, mm, I don't want to do that. Right. I don't like that. Right. First that of all, I don't like how good. it feels being the receiver of that. Right. Second of all, I'm just not that person who just needs to share all right. of the intimate details of my life with every stranger I encounter. Agree. So um, that was my first time just taking a step back. Interesting. And observing. Mm. And once for me anyway, I did it once and I was like, well, that was kind of interesting. That was kind of fun, actually. Yeah. It was a neat little experiment when you're not so intent on having to be the one doing the talking Yeah. and not, not even just participating in a conversation. Cause so often we don't, we, we don't listen to understand. We listen to respond. Agree. When you listen to understand or listen to just observe, that's a whole different conversation. It is. It's interesting. So, um, opposite, perhaps, I find myself, that's my comfort zone oh. to be able to um, uh, be in a conversation to observe. Um, and that's where I end up with some of that social anxiety mm -hmm. because like my mind goes into this place of like observing and analyzing. And then I'm like, oh shit, I'm, I should probably something say something gregarious to like encourage this conversation and now I have nothing to say. <laughs> Sorry. So I've observed you talk a lot about yourself. <laughs> or not even that, but just to like, oh, well, what did that mean? Oh. Right. So then I take that whole process internally and it, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. It can just be an observation, mm -hmm. right? And I take it internally, and then I'm like, shit, I was supposed to keep going with the conversation. Oh, and I you lost the thread because you, you're I did. analyzing in your head. Right, oh, right. Okay. So there's, there's like... That might be a little trickier there's then. There's balance mm -hmm. to all of those things, right? Like, naturally, I go to observation as opposed to... Um, you know, perhaps you are like, okay, well, I can meet you where you're at. And then this time you All kind right. of stepped out of it to be able to say, let me observe this instead, as opposed to meet you where you're at. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yes, like, for sure. That is exactly what happened. Yeah. There was no way I was meeting those people where they were at. Right. There were too many of them. Right. Yeah. So, and that felt like, oh, this is unusual and interesting as opposed to where I am. I oftentimes find myself is like, oh, well, that's what I naturally do. Now, shit, I have to figure out how to oh. how to get back into that conversation so that people keep talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> or it becomes more awkward. It, it which does. Which now your anxiety just went up a notch. It absolutely does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so observing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it's a, uh, I think it's, it's a practice. It's a practice. It, it is for absolutely sure. a practice. Yeah, for sure. To be, and like most things, you know, it might be that you've had that entire conversation or argument or feeling um, before you realize, shit, I should have, I should have observed that. And then yeah. perhaps going back and being able to say, okay, well, well, let's rewind a little bit and figure out what was I feeling at that time and being able yeah. to establish some um, different descriptor words mm -hmm. or let it outside of you so that you can, like Nikki said, really like um, dissect it, like take it outside of you so that it doesn't yeah. invoke feeling anymore, but you can like see and identify the aspects of it. Um, right. Turn it around and look at every angle of right, it. Right. And maybe, I mean, maybe then like adapt it to a piece of art or, or mm. a song or, you know, something, something concrete. Right. What form does it have? What color? What shape? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I've never attached it to that. Um, but I do come back and say, so this is what, this is what was happening with me mm -hmm. when we were talking or arguing about X this is why I got so upset or this is what I was trying to communicate. I didn't do it very well last night, but, but now yeah. in the light of day, this, this is really what I was trying to say. Right. right. Or it, it triggered me in some way. Right. 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 I know that you didn't intend to step on that bomb, like that landmine. Yes. Um, but, but you in did. fact you did. And this is the landmine that you stepped on. Right. It has nothing to do with you. Right. It's something that I you need to figure it. out and process. Right. Right. Interesting. But this is why I, I am upset and had to walk away from whatever situation. You thought I was mad at you. I'm not mad. I'm not actually mad at anybody, but I'm having some feelings that I need some time to process. Yep. And these are the feelings, but I'm not done processing. Right. I'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll come back and we can resume this conversation. I'll meet you. And in, in Later. the meantime, they're like, please forget, please forget. <laughs> right. I, I never want to have this conversation again. <laughs> in fact, I don't want to be having this conversation now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, it's fine. Feelings. <laughs> feelings. It's you got to feel your feels. It, well, you do, because if you don't, it leads you to some really self destructive places, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really self-destructive. They and don't go away. No, they absolutely do not go they away. Grow, they, they grow, they fester. Morph, right. Yes. It, it moves into that out of balance place, absolutely. perhaps in a secondary emotion, and it continues to get bigger and bigger. Right. So until um, you've truly spiraled out of control. And, and it is okay to um, not be able to recognize it while it's happening, but, but take the moment when you figure out what has happened go back and take the moment and boy, I was really angry last night. What was that about? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or last week or whatever. Or right. in this, you know, I think situation. the sooner you can do it, the better. Oh, Otherwise it's definitely. just festering for most a week definitely. or more, but yeah. 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 Whew. Feelings. <laughs> There's a Isn't song. There a song? There yeah. is a song to that too. <laughs> Feeling. Yes. That one. <laughs> okay. We don't need to go there. <laughs> All right, we should wrap this up, huh? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So thanks um, to Mind Garden Media, as always, for putting our podcast together. And putting up with us, and frankly. putting up with us. Yeah, we've given Todd a little <laughs> bit of grief lately. Giving him a run for his money. Yeah, sorry about that. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> Not that that makes it any better, because it doesn't. It still We're happened. still accountable. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway, Todd, thanks so much for all of your hard work and putting this together and making it so just wonderful and fantastic and easy for us. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. Thank you to everyone who listens to man. I, every time I look at our stats, my whole heart fills up. Yeah. Fills straight up. Right. Um, the amount of people that are listening and our tribe is growing. Yeah. Um, we see on social media and um, on different platforms that people that new we followers, don't, yeah, we don't yeah. even know these people right. like directly, but gosh, 
like feel so very closely connected to them. Absolutely. Um, thank you for... Somehow they stumbled upon us and we're grateful for that. Thank you for um, allowing our tribe to grow Yeah. and um, for letting us um, connect with you. Um, whether it's on your ride into somewhere or, you know, on getting your day started yeah, or while or you're doing winding housework. down, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Adios. For this one. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.